Hi everyone, we are with The Future Is Us and today we'll be addressing the school to prison pipeline in Galveston Independent School District. My name is Bianca Obinian. I'm a second year student in the combined medical master's in public health program and I also serve as the Future Is Us policy task force coordinator. Hi everyone, my name is Mary Solomon. I am a second year MPH student here at UTM. Hello, my name is Toby Agnew. I'm a sophomore at Ball High School, and I'm one of the lead advocates for the future of us. Hi, my name is Tonisha Martinez. I'm a freshman at Ball High School, and I'm a youth lead advocate for the future of us. The future of us is a community-based initiative that is working to dismantle the school-to-prison pipeline by analyzing school district policy and having discussions with the community regarding school discipline. By focusing on policy development, the Future Is Us aims to improve student outcomes and strengthen the relationship between students and administrators. So today, um, we will be giving you guys a background of the school to prison pipeline. We'll describe the scope of the problem in Texas and in Galveston Independent School District. We'll identify our priority population, discuss community feedback, identify interventions that we've used, and evaluation of the policies that we have recommended. The school to prison pipeline activates is a trend wherein children in the education system are pushed out of their regular education environment and into the juvenile criminal systems. Black youths are five times more likely to be incarcerated than white youth, and, a, and receiving a single suspension from school serves as a key turning point towards increased odds of incarceration. Okay, so in Texas, the school to prison pipeline has resulted in countless young children and teens subjected to being taken out of their classroom environment. In the 2015 to 2016 school year, 63,874 students were dealt with out of school suspensions. That number included 37,691 students in between the third and fifth grade. Black students were disproportionately affected. In Texas, Black students only account for 13% of the entire school population, but make up for 47% of all pre-K through fifth grade out-of-school suspensions. In addition, in Texas school districts, Black students are subjected to use of force by school district police at a rate more than twice their representation in the student body. In the Galveston Independent School District, Black students compromised 25% of the student population in the 2019 to 2020 school year, coming in second after Hispanics, Hispanic students who compromised 48% and white students who compromised 24% of the student population. Of the 1,063 GISD students who received one or more disciplinary exclusions from the classroom in school year 2020, 43% were Black, 39 were Hispanic, and 18 were white. Black students were 2.4 times more likely than their white peers and two times more likely than their Hispanic peers to have received one or more disciplinary exclusions from the classroom. Since the school to prison. From pre-kindergarten through fourth grade, black students were two times more likely than their white peers and three times more, 3.3 times more likely than their Hispanic peers to experience disciplinary exclusions from the classroom. In the middle and high school grade levels, black students were 2.3 and 2.5 times more likely than their white peers, and 2. Point and 1.9 times more likely than their Hispanic peers to receive disciplinary exclusions from the classroom. The Texas Education Code justifies out-of-school suspension if a student engages in a conduct that is related to unlawful carrying of a weapon, violent offense, selling, giving, or delivering controlled substances, or being under the influence. Of the 429 infractions that resulted in out-of-school suspension, only 38 qualify for mandatory removal per the De Texas Education Code. This highlights how school discipline policies are relying heavily on exclusionary punishment and fostering inequality and racial disparities. Since the school to prison pipeline disproportionately impacts Black students, our priority population is Black students in Galveston Independent School District. All right, so this is what some of the students are telling us um, when we discuss the disciplinary issues within GISD. The teacher told me that maybe my parents should have raised me better. And when I talked back to her, she called security to get me out of class. Every day after that, I felt targeted because I was always the only one to get in trouble in that class. People think that we're just 
is that just because we're black that we're not innocent or we're unintelligent. In order, in order, raise, in order to raise awareness of disparities in the educational system in Galveston, the Future Is Us has presented at different meetings around the communities, including the NAACP, Galveston Chamber of Commerce, and Artists Boat. We have also held a weekly difficult conversations on Facebook, shedding light on the issue. I have personally spoken at school board meetings. In this picture, I spoke at the GISD curriculum meeting where I expressed that every child should have access to a, a quality education. As a black male, I recognize the difference in treatment and know it may negatively impact my future if the current circumstances do not change. So along with spreading awareness, another one of our main interventions is creating this policy brief. So we spoke to students and parents, we reviewed the GIC policy, we evaluated the GIC disciplinary data and reviewed the literature and came up with this policy brief that outlined some of our recommendations. So the evidence tells us that disciplinary actions taken against minor infractions do not deter defiant behavior. They actually increase adolescent misconducts. Teachers are also more likely to respond to minor fractions by a black student in a more extreme manner than a white student and perceive black students' misbehavior as a pattern that would lead to a future suspension. As a result, black students are more likely to experience injustice, which can lead to mistrust and disengagement from the institution of education and underperformance in academic settings. And this underperformance in academic settings has been highlighted in the local data in GIC which shows that Black students who received one or more disciplinary exclusions from the classroom were 1.2 times more likely to have an academic slide in reading or English language arts across all grading periods. Removal from the classroom has detrimental effects on the mental health and well-being of all students. And a study conducted across 132 schools across 80 different communities throughout the United States Researchers found a significant association between schools that had high exclusionary discipline policies and oppressive symptoms in students who were affected by those same policies. The comments from students mentioned earlier by Samira show that the impact disciplinary disparities have had on our students' self-esteem. So here are our policy recommendations. The first one being banning willful despise suspensions. Willful defiance can be described as disruptive behavior, non-compliance, or insubordination. These are all subjective. An example is the term talking back. Talking back can be seen as offending yourself or also being rude. Again, we see these black students are disproportionately impacted by these subjective infractions in GIC. Another one of our policy recommendations is placing greater emphasis on restorative justice practices. Restorative practices are designed to address the root cause of behavioral issues by focusing on building and nurturing relationships. We see that districts that have implanted restorative practices has, has, uh, as alternatives to suspensions have demonstrated a decrease in overall out-of-school suspension rates and narrowed the racial disparity gap between Black students and their peers. Finally, another one of our policy recommendations is establishing a diverse review committee. This annual evaluation of disciplinary policies and behavioral interventions by a committee can help identify disparities and allow administrators to work toward solutions for better outcomes for all of their students. And here's an evaluation of the policies that we have recommended that's been conducted in Los Angeles Unified School District. So in that district, 26,569 reported suspensions were in the year of 2011 and 2012. Willful defiance accounted for anywhere between 43 to 53% of all suspensions in the school district. In 2013, the Los Angeles Unified School District became the first district in the state of California to officially ban willful defiance practices throughout its schools. In place of willful defiance, the LA Unified School District adopted restorative justice practices that are focused around counseling and communication. Restorative justice practices were set with the main goal of improving, improving teacher-student relationships and reducing the racial disparity in students who were suspended. So six years later, they saw that there was a 75% decrease in suspensions. And in the year of 2017 and 2018 school year, 6, 000, they had 6,423 suspensions. So that's a dramatic decrease in their suspensions from 2011 to 2012. 
So we are very proud to say that our spreading awareness, along with looking at the policies and disciplinary data regarding this issue, has allowed for GIC to explore conducting an equity audit within the next few years. This came with all the hard work with the Futures Us, Causeway Galveston, Center for Violence Prevention, the NIA Cultural Center, Galveston Urban Ministries, and many other community organizations who do the work in ensuring that the students in this district have the best quality education. And so on behalf of the Futures Us, we'd like to thank everyone for allowing us to present today.